This is Scott Wiedemann. Uh, this is my second and final video for Chem Informatics. This presentation deals with smiles and Inchi. The first video talked about graph isomorphism and subgraph isomorphism. Although this video is unrelated to the first, there are similar concepts in Chem Informatics that we'll be discussing. First, we're going to talk about um, different encodings for chemical compounds, chemical structures, and molecules, um, and then some of the more popular ones, SMILES and INCHI, which are two different types of encodings. We're going to talk about the history of each of those, um, the structure and the format of both SMILES and INCHI. I'm going to go ahead and give some examples of um, both SMILES and INCHI formats. And we're going to briefly touch on um, why it's important to have these encodings um, such that a computer can understand them. And we'll also touch a little bit on canonicalization, standardization, or you might have heard of, of normalization of some of these compounds. There's several encodings that have been used for uh, the last 60 or 70 years. WLN, or Wise Wesser Line Notation, has been used since 1949. Um, it's still used, but pretty outdated and um, a little antiquated uh, for the modern day. A lot of the other formats have replaced it. Connection tables, those were introduced uh, in the late 1970s. You think of a connection table almost like an adjacency matrix. It says where the molecules are and how they're connected to one another. You can imagine a matrix that would have carbons and oxygens um, in certain rows and columns that would dictate how those molecules are connected. This might be a similar to format to, say, um, a dot .mol file, or <clears throat> which uh, jmol uses. jmol is a visual application program for viewing molecules. It uses a format similar to um, what you might think of in a connection table. I'm going to talk about SMILES um, in depth throughout this presentation, but SMILES stands for Simplified Molecular Input Line Entry System, and it's been around since about the 1980s. I'm also going to talk about canonical SMILES, which addresses some of the problems that SMILES has in it. SMARTS, SMARTS is uh, SMILES Arbitrary Target Specification. It's an extension of SMILES, and it was created to address some of the substructures that we see in compounds. Um, it can capture it can capture the substructures using using SMARTS. SMARTS was made in about 1989, uh, and it's sort of a combination of SMILES and SMARTS. Uh, it's a little more robust in that it does allow you to specify chemical reactions in the ones we've talked about before, at the top of the list. Um, that's purely an encoding for one um, molecule or compound. SMIRCS does allow you to, to uh, encode reactions, and it does allow you to capture um, a wider variety of information. Uh, SLN, or SIBL, or SIBL line notation, has been around since 1997 about. It's similar to SMIRCS in that it does allow you to capture uh, reactions and more information. And then INCHI is the other encoding that I'm going to talk about in depth uh, later in this presentation, and that stands for International Chemical Identifier. It's very common now and used as a standard. So I will be talking about SMILES and INCHI for the rest of the presentation. SMILES, like I said before, stands for Simplified Molecular Input Line Entry System. It's been around since the 1980s. SMILES uh, is great because it's human readable, so we can encode a string and uh, it means something to you when you, you look at it and read it, which is nice, but it can also be interpreted by computers. It also retains a lot of structure. Um, some of the things it captures, atoms, bonds, um, aromaticity, branching, stereochemistry, isotopes. So all of this information that you might have about uh, a molecule can be captured. A smile string can be obtained by traversing a structure uh, with a depth 
first tree traversal in in that's in the graph representation of that structure. So when we represent a molecule as a graph, like I talked about in my first video, um, it's necessary to convert that graph into a spanning tree. So we do some modifications on the graph, convert it into, into a spanning tree, we remove the hydrogen uh, bonds and atoms, and then we break some of the cycles that exist in the tree. And we do that simply to perform uh, this tree traversal. As you'll see in some examples, you'll notice that parentheses are used to indicate points of branching on the tree. And there's, there will be other symbols. Um, you may see an equal sign for a double bond or ampersand for a triple bond. Something to note about SMILES is that an encoding is non-unique, so you can have several encodings um, for one particular molecule. And you'll see that in an example as well. An example I'm going to use today is acidic acid, C2H4O2. That's the compound name, acidic acid. The compound formula is C2H4O2. And then this CC parenthesis equals zero parenthesis zero, that's a SMILES representation for acidic acid. Um, so in the SMILES representation, you have a carbon, the first C, then the next character is also a C, so you have a bond between carbon and carbon. We have a parenthetical now, which indicates a branch, so we will branch to oxygen. Uh, before the O, though, there's an equal sign, which indicates a double bond, so we'll make a double bond from the carbon to the oxygen, in parenthesis, which means our branch is finished and a final oxygen from that second carbon is coming off. And you might say, okay, well, <clears throat> I don't see any hydrogen here. And you're right, you have to fill in the hydrogen as appropriate. So carbon needs um, four bonds, oxygen needs two. Um, you fill in the hydrogen appropriately. One of the oxygens will have that double bond, one will have a hydrogen, and the carbon will need three more hydrogens. Something to note um, is that this encoding, CC parenthesis equals zero parenthesis zero, is just one encoding for this string, or for this molecule. Another SMILES encoding might be zero equals C parenthesis C in parenthetical zero. So that would be, you know, an oxygen with a double bond to a carbon, branched to a carbon, uh, and then another oxygen hanging off of that first carbon. And that should make sense by looking at the diagram in both of these strings. You can say, yep, um, both of these uh, SMILE strings encode the same molecule. You might say, well, that was pretty easy to follow. Uh, can you encode more complex structures? And here's an example, C54H74N2O10 and I've given the SMILE string below. You can see that it's quite complex. Um, we have <coughs> ampersands and percent signs, which denote uh, bonding and smaller, uh, uh, both lowercase and uppercase letters, which indicate something about how the hydrogen uh, bonds are. And I also have um, a 2D depiction of the molecule below. So it is possible to encode much more complex molecules. And I think with some time and some more understanding, we could uh, indeed decompose this string and, and write out um, the, the compound or draw the compound. Canonical SMILES was made to address some of the problems that exist in SMILES. One problem that you saw earlier was that one compound has several different encodings. Ethanol, for example, could be encoded with SMILES as CCO, OCC. Um, C parenthetical O in parenthetical C. All the same compound, ethanol, but several different encodings. Built on top of SMILES is another uh, encoding, canonical SMILES. And that aims to create a unique string for each structure. That's easier said than done. Um, canonicalization is a difficult problem and in the first video uh, I addressed that uh, when I was talking about isomorphism. But um, 
there are many algorithms to canonicalize a string or a representation, and so um, depending on the algorithm you use, you may get different encodings. Uh, but canonical smiles uh, is an enhancement to smiles. It isn't perfect in that um, it's it's a very difficult problem to have, uh, create a unique string for any any given structure. So we're going to move past this and talk about Inchi. Inchi again is International Chemical Identifier. Uh, it has a lot of good things and a lot of bad things as well. Um, some of the good things are uh, it claims to be canonical. Uh, it can capture some more information that some of the other models cannot. Um, stereo centers and isomers, for example. Some of the bad things about it, um, you can't generate it manually, so it takes a computer to uh, generate an inchi uh, encoding. Uh, pretty complex algorithms have been used to generate these inchi strings. Um, parts of it are human readable, but parts are not human readable, so um, parts of the structure are meant for computer interpretation. Uh, it's not great at substructure searching, which some of the other encodings are, and you cannot encode reactions with it uh, as you could with Sybil or Smirks. So to address some of the formatting issues, um, every inchy identifier starts with uh, INCHI equals then the version number. So far there's only been version 1, so it's always NICHI equals 1 and then the letter capital S for standard. After that you're going to have six layers. Um, layers are separated with commas and you're definitely going to have the main layer. Main layer is a necessity and then there's a whole bunch of optional layers. Charge layer, stereochemical layer, isotopic layer, fixed hydrogen layer, and the reconnected layer. Uh, so we aren't going to talk about any of those layers that can be get very complex and very long for larger molecules. We're just going to talk about the main layer from now on. Also recognize that uh, there are these six layers, but these six layers have sub-layers within them. The sub-layers in the string are going to be separated with a slash, and you'll see that when I talk about the main layer. The main layer has these three basic sublayers: the chemical formula layer, the atom connections layer, and the hydrogen layer. The chemical formula layer is a necessity in every entry. Um, it's just like it sounds. It's just the chemical formula listed in the string. The next sublayer of the main layer, the atomic connections layer, is always prefixed with a C, which simply stands for connections. And then uh, it's a list of, of numbers. Um, which correspond to the atoms in the chemical formula. And it does exclude hydrogens in this connection layer. The hydrogen layer, the next layer, captures those hydrogen atoms and how they're connected. And that layer is prefixed with an H standing for hydrogen. This might be easier to see in an example. Let's look at the same example we looked at with smiles. Let's look at the acetic acid example. Uh, like I, like I stated, the string is going to start with INCHI, INCHI equals 1S, that's one standard. Slash indicates the first sublayer that we have, which is the chemical formula, C2H4O2. Next slash, this is going to be our connections layer, lowercase c stands for connections. And you see some, uh, you know, 1 2, 3, 4, and the slash. The numbers in this layer uh, correspond to the atoms in the chemical formula, excluding the hydrogens. So let's look at the chemical formula for a second. Uh, two carbons, four hydrogens, and two oxygens. If we ignore the hydrogens, we have two carbons and then two oxygens in order. And we could number those molecules one through four, uh, one and two being carbons and three and four being oxygens. In the connections layer then, uh, we say 1 is bonded to 2, so uh, carbon is connected to carbon. Then there's a branch. As we saw in smiles, the parentheses indicate the branch. 
the carbon's connected to an oxygen, denoted with the 3. 2 is connected to 3. The branch finishes. We close the parenthetical. And there's a 4. 4 corresponds to our last oxygen. And 2 is connected to 4. You can see that in the diagram below. Um, once we have our basic structure, we can add on the hydrogens in that fourth uh, layer, the hydrogen layer. First H just says it's hydrogen layer. One indicates the atom number again, which would be carbon. H3 says there are three hydrogens on that carbon. And you'll notice in the diagram, that's right, the first carbon that was listed does indeed have three hydrogens in the uh, graphic below. The next section says that molecules 3 and 4 will also have a hydrogen. You can see that the double bond in between the uh, oxygen and carbon satisfy the valence electrons of those two atoms, and then we have that dangling hydrogen off of the, the last oxygen there. So I hope that intuitively makes sense. Um, 1s, which is just a standard, the chemical formula, the connections layer, and then the hydrogen layer. You can imagine how this would get pretty complex as well and pretty hard to interpret in the larger structure that I showed before in SMILES, C54H74N2O10. I provide the entry string below. And this does have those added layers of charge and aromaticity added. You can see that it's pretty complex. I think we would be able to look at the chemical formula, the connection layer, and the hydrogen layer and draw the structure. Uh, in a 2E representation for this molecule. So we've talked about these encodings, both SMILES and INCHI. I've given some examples. Um, but what does it give you? Great, it seems, it seems like there's not a lot here. Um, well, to a computer, these can mean a lot more, you know. Uh, visually, humans are pretty visual and we can look at a diagram and dissect it pretty easily say, well, uh, you know, this carbon, this hydrogen are connected, it's easier for us to interpret the diagram, but to a computer, uh, we need to capture that structure, and we do it with these encodings. This image here was generated by JMOL, and it uses that .mol file I talked about previously. So we can use some of these encodings to uh, create meaning to a computer, and then the computer can draw these models for us. So it's efficient for a computer, uh, a computer model, a computer representation. That concludes my presentation. Uh, I hope you have a better understanding of some of the encodings we talked about, particularly SMILES and INCHI. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks for watching.